So, in my last video, I think I may have said something pretty stupid. Turns out not only did I say something stupid, I did something stupid. Well, all the dots are forward, but the valve release are off. Yeah, I have that one up. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We hope you guys enjoyed your holidays. I know I had an amazing time visiting family and then catching up with the rest of the Skunk Works team. However, now it's time to get back to work. But before we do that, you guys already know what I'm gonna ask you to do. Please go ahead and click the like button for this video and subscribe to the channel so we can keep that momentum going. Guys, our last video had over 12,000 views, which is just mind blowing to me, especially considering we're still in just our first year of really committing to doing the whole YouTube thing and putting out content consistently. So thank you all for the support. I think in the past 28 days, we've gotten almost 20,000 views total. Uh, so huge shout out to you guys for keeping us going. Uh, and let's, let's keep it up. So this started out as a Gen 3 5.3 liter. We ended up doing a 363 cubic inch stroker kit. We bored it out to match the stock LS1 bores, added a four inch stroke. Um, picking up where we left off in the last video, I uh, see cranks in, turn smoothly by hands. We were able to fix the issue of the camshaft kind of binding. What it ended up being was the number five camshaft bearing wasn't in perfectly straight so it was off just enough to cause some binding and not letting the camshaft rotate freely or spin freely and now um, you guys get a chance to laugh at me for not being that strong but i'm going to torque these main caps down uh arp hardware of course just like the cleveland everything in this is going to be arp fasteners and hardware but yeah that happens when a skinny guy tries to add hundreds of foot pounds of torque to stuff all right, so full disclosure, the ARP fasteners don't actually call for 100 foot-pounds. Uh, your inner ones are going to be 60 foot-pounds. Your outer ones or the taller ones are going to be 50 foot-pounds. Your side ones are going to be 20 foot-pounds. And you're supposed to put some RTV underneath the head of the side bolts. Uh, like most ARP fasteners, it's recommended that you go in three passes, uh, three even passes. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through the, the two inner ones. And increments of 20 foot pounds. So we got our trusty Harbor Freight torque wrench. Set it 20 pounds. Just gonna follow the sequence. And then finally back up to 60. For the last pass on the outer bolts, 50 foot pounds. Remember to always zero out your torque wrenches after using them, uh, especially if you're using, you know, some of the lesser expensive torque wrenches. It just kind of helps them stay calibrated. All right, so now the crank's in, the main caps are torqued down. Um, we're going to throw the rest of the rotating assembly in. Now, if you guys haven't seen the previous video where we started out on the LS, it's a K1 crank, four inch stroker crank, uh, K1 rods, Wisco pistons. We already set the ring gap. So we're just gonna go ahead. First, I'm gonna lubricate the uh, cylinder walls. I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil on there. Uh, make it a little bit easier for those pistons to slide in. That's that. Now it's time to just like I said, coat this walls and uh, drop the pistons in. Where was? Slap these race bearings in. You can notice the bearings have a little coat to them. If we get this to focus. So you see that? This chance is supposed to help with uh, lubrication and managing the friction and the heat. Let's see, I've never run like coated bearings in any of my engines before, so we'll see how it goes. So, in my last video, uh, this is the last video involving the LS, I think I may have said something pretty stupid. I don't know if it got taken out during editing, but 
I said that I don't think these rods are directional, which is completely wrong. These rods are absolutely directional as most rods are. If you look on this side, it's really flat. Really, uh, it's not much of a curve or chamfer to it. These are where the two rods would meet together. So this would be facing towards the inside of the, the rod journal. This side, you see it's got more of a chamfered edge to it, more of a curve. This side is gonna be the side that goes closest to the counterweight. This is the Summit Racing uh, ring compressor. I'm starting to really like these tools versus the old ratchet style ring compressor that I'd used in the past. I found with the ratchet style ring compressor, I was constantly having to crank on it, crank on it, and adjust on the fly, and I couldn't get the, the uh, pistons and the reins to compress evenly. But with this, it just makes life so much easier. You just kind of feed it through. I had to get enough of the skirt out that it can line itself up inside the, the uh, cylinder. There we go. This is why we lubricated the piston walls before. Boom, look at that. Straight shot in on the money. I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. I'm just gonna work through one bank and then rotate it over, work through the other bank, flip the engine upside down, and then go through the torque specs on everything. Yeah, I think that's how I'm gonna do it. Sixteenth bolt and a 1.4 inch uh, underhead length. We want, according to K1, somewhere between uh, 45 ten thousandths to 50 ten thousandths. And we'll cheat by starting by torquing them to 30 foot pounds. just how much stretch that gave. So we overshot it just a little bit. I should know we undershot it. angle <laughs> well guys I'm gonna be honest I'm, I don't think I'm doing this whole rod bolt stretch thing the right way uh, that's a prime example of why this isn't a how-to channel and it's more of a, well, let's see how these guys are doing it and then let's assume it's probably wrong. So we're gonna go back to what's always worked for us before and that's just going to a torque spec. Um, luckily, K1 does have a torque sequence or a torque spec um, you know, for their kit as well. So we're gonna 
go through that. And it's 30 foot pounds plus 50 degrees. a problem all right well remember earlier when i said that i may have said something a little stupid about the rods not being directional it turns out not only did i say something stupid i also did something stupid when i was first putting the pistons on the rods and go figure of course i put some of them on backwards we've got all eight pistons in yeah, right away You'll notice all my dots are facing forward, my, my locator dots. However, the valve reliefs are on opposite sides. Now all the rods are angled the right way, uh, flat side being in, chamber side being out towards the counterweights. So how do we know which one is right? Well, despite the fact that the uh, lettering is as it would be if you were reading. Valve reliefs on two valve engines actually go towards the inside of the engine. Um, kind of going through some of some racing tech tips and actually going through Wisco themselves. Um, the intake or the relief valves should be on the inside. Now, it's maybe something that I could just flip the pistons around, move the sides that are on bank one over to bank two, and then the pistons from bank two over to bank one. But we're not gonna do that. Uh, sure, that might work, but I'd rather not find out if it was right or wrong, and it's not worth the risk. So instead, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the pistons off, uh, pull the pistons off of the rods, flip them around, get everything the way they're supposed to be that way, the rod and the piston and the dial are all oriented the way it was meant to be from the manufacturer. That way, if anything goes wrong with this engine, it won't be because I took a shortcut there. And we're still early enough into the reassembly that we're not going to lose much time by doing it. So, I'll check back in with you guys after that's done and all the pistons will be in. And then we can start moving on to getting the bottom end buttoned up. All right, well. Finally got all the pistons sorted out. Everything's oriented in the right direction. Valve release from the right location. Uh, everything's in. However, I need to go buy a better uh, torque angled indicator. I tried to run and grab one from the parts store here. The one they had is just shitty. It's the best way to put it. It, it sucks. Uh, so what we're gonna do what really should be done with this and just junk that. Went out and bought a torque wrench that actually reads uh, angle or torque angle. So this is just a Quinn digital wrench from Harbor Freight. I wanted a digital torque wrench for a while now. Uh, I still think my Icon torque wrench, uh, the quick style one, is more accurate. It's more repeatable than this, but this one has more functions that I can use, and it's going to be just right for this one. Again, that's a recommendation from K1 in the absence of being able to do rod bolt stretch. I have the tool to do rod bolt stretch. I don't have the skill and knowledge to do it. So what I can do is read a torque wrench, 
and an angle setting. So that's what we did. Everything should turn smoothly. Uh, of course, I tested as I went. So that way, if a rod did bind up, I would be able to identify which rod was binding up versus doing them all at once and then trying to guess which rod would be binding up potentially. But everything's turning over smooth. Nothing's bonding. Nothing is binding. So, yeah. I say we're good to go there. Uh, see the assembly loop pushing out in between the rods. I, I'd call this a job done. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, thanks for checking out the video. Again, please subscribe to the channel. Like the video, comment on the video, put in all the stuff you noticed that I missed. Uh, if I did in fact miss it and it's the right answer, I'll go back and fix it. Or if I did it off camera, I'll just let you know that I did it off camera and we'll just go from there. Uh, I appreciate the support guys. Again, thank you so much. 12,000 views on the video is completely insane to us. We hope we keep that going. So, till next time, see you.